The executive order signed by President Trump is putting Huawei in a precarious position, uh, limiting how U.S. companies can sell products to Huawei. So, James, uh, in talking about this, what do you think are the implications here? This is going to affect basically every business unit that Huawei has. For consumers, the most visible one of these is going to be their smartphone division, mm -hmm. which they've only had kind of recently. But they're now pretty much neck and neck for second and third largest smartphone vendor in the world. Granted, about half of their shipments are in China, so how this affects things in China and how it affects uh, consumers around the world is going to be a little bit different. But starting out, their ability to use Google Play services, which is all of the proprietary stuff built on top of Android, is very much in doubt. And initially what it looked like it was going to be is Huawei wasn't going to have access to Play services at all. Mm -hmm. So future phones wouldn't be able to use it. And that means that they would have to develop their own you know, app store and not just app store, but also APIs that Google provides to app developers. So if you have a Maps application or, you know, if, for an example, if you have an application that uh, is like for a restaurant mm -hmm. and you want to provide a way to, you know, show people where the nearest location is, you can use the Google Maps API, but that depends on the Play services. And without Play services, that map function won't work. And so developers would have to create a separate app for Huawei Android phones that has you know, whatever mapping system that they want to embed into their services. So it would actually put a lot of burden on app developers if Huawei were to go that route. The problem is, is this is all a little bit shaky. Mm -hmm. Like things are happening very rapidly. And while it looked like originally that Huawei wasn't going to have access to the Play services or Play Store at all, there's kind of a 90 day reprieve and you know, we'll see in 90 days whether or not that is extended. It's all a little bit shaky, like I said. So for smartphones, future phones are going to have you know, kind of an uncertain future. Whether or not they're going to continue shipments in the US for new phones is unclear. For existing phones, Huawei is going to actually be able to keep Google Play services and access to the Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. So they can continue to deliver you know, new software updates to keep existing phones that people already have secure. So owners of current Huawei phones are not really you know, in the line of fire here. Right. But if you're looking at buying a new phone, it's not something that's going to inspire confidence. No, absolutely not. And that reprieve you mentioned, that's a 90 day. Yeah, so that, that's going to run up you know, in 90 days. Quickly, yeah, yeah. But whether or not this is still a point of contention with the Trump administration in 90 days is yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. Without going, you know, without delving too far into politics, there's a number of different avenues that uh, the administration is really looking into, you know, changing the way that trade works. And how long they're going to focus specifically on this situation is not very clear. Mm -hmm. The, the thing is, is that the concerns about Huawei have actually predated the Trump administration. So going back even to 2012, there were concerns about whether or not Huawei's uh, devices were secure. Mm -hmm. And only in the last month or so has there been a real smoking gun. The problem is, is that smoking gun looks more like a you know, toy water pistol <laughs> right. than anything else. Right. Because what they're claiming as a smoking gun is an exposed Telnet interface in Huawei's you know, commercial equipment that's sold to internet service providers and um, mobile network operators. Mm -hmm. And this is you know, stuff that consumers would never have in their house. It's you know, commercial equipment. Right. The problem is, is these are all vulnerabilities that other vendors like Cisco have had anyway. So trying to claim that as a smoking gun is uh, kind of a bridge too far. Like these are the result of poor security practices and rightfully Huawei should be held accountable for poor security practices as any other vendor should be. The problem is, is every vendor in that space has a kind of mixed reputation. Um, pretty much any day that ends with Y, you're going to have to patch Cisco products. So this is, this is an ongoing thing that everyone is subject to. And it's not the first time we've seen this. This has happened uh, before. So kind of expand on that uh, and how this, the past experiences with other companies will impact this and how, where we go from here with Huawei. So last May, ZTE faced 
almost identical situation for a different cause. Like it was claimed that they were violating trade embargoes. And so for a while, it wasn't really possible to buy ZTE products and ZTE couldn't purchase components from American companies. And that's the same situation that Huawei is in now. So without the ability for Huawei to buy those components, for them to make new products is going to be difficult. And they've seen this coming allegedly, so they've apparently stockpiled, reports differ, but between three and 12 months worth of chips just to be able to weather this storm. How true that is, you know, who knows. Hmm. But ZTE was a much smaller company. They didn't have the financial resource, resources to do that type of thing. And what you saw with that is ZTE products started being dumped actually really quickly in kind of a fire sale situation. So the ZTE Axon M, which was introduced in late 2017, by May was already you know, six, nine months old. And the phone was not actually very well received to begin with. So, a, you know, $800 phone is being dumped for $250, $200. And right now, I, the lowest I've seen is $130 for a brand new phone. And that was a very early foldable phone that was not well received. And instead of a, you know, curved mm -hmm. display like the Samsung phone, it used two independent panels, but the experience was not very good. Mm -hmm. So with that, you started seeing ZTE products being dumped for, you know, below the bill of materials. So they were going to take a loss just to get revenue flowing again. And you might see that depending on how long this current spat goes with the Trump administration. So it's, it's possible that you can get some really cheap products <laughs> right. uh, if you want some really cheap Huawei products. And while there are smartphones that you know, consumers would have and then the industrial equipment for network operators and internet service providers, Huawei does actually have a very small PC OEM business. And they, they make laptops that are you know, inspired by, we can say, uh, mm -hmm. like MacBook products. It's you know, machined aluminum. They're premium looking devices. Whether or not they're going to be able to you know, continue to, to get Windows licenses is also going to be really unclear. And if they can't buy processors from Intel, you know, how are they going to build more? So it's possible that you can see these being dumped in sales channels for a little bit lower than retail value, but I wouldn't imagine that you're going to see a ZTE situation where they're being dumped for significantly below the bill of materials. All right, so really an ongoing situation. It really yeah. is. It, yeah. it is impossible to really say where we're going to be, you know, in 90 days when that uh, waiver expires. It's just, it is an ongoing situation. Yeah, with a lot at stake, really. So uh, for the latest on Huawei, make sure you stick with ZDNet and Tech Republic.